I just think it was such a five star. I feel like I'm at an art gallery looking at a painting and seeing what it represents and going, oh, that's beautiful, harrowing, sad, whatever. But it doesn't feel like an experience of reading a book to me. I cannot believe my luck. Honestly, I can't believe it. Oh, <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. Let's turn that lighting down a bit. It's too late for that. <laughs> right, in this video, we're gonna be doing a 24 hour readathon. That light is still bright. It's very late, guys. <laughs> How I felt filming this. We're doing a 24 hour readathon because I might be a bit behind on my reading goal. <laughs> just be a little bit behind just a little bit so i am running a 24 hour readathon with my patrons today it's currently half 11 it starts at midnight i've never done one of these before my patrons i'm really excited and i just feel like this is a good opportunity to get ahead on well not get ahead because i mean i'm 17 books behind schedule i don't know if 150 books is gonna quite happen i'd like to try and catch up on it a bit we're not gonna read 17 books in 24 hours but at least i'd like to catch up on a bit so i thought i would vlog it i think i lasted a 24 Friday-a-thon like a year ago. I'm just gonna say right we're gonna read. Sometimes I watch some people's 24 hour readathons and they're like, we're gonna read a lot of books and we're gonna bake a cake and we're gonna go to the beach. And I'm like, girl. Oh, let's be realistic. We're just reading. Like we're reading, reading. I'm doing quite a lot of sprints with my patrons. We're gonna sprint till 2 a.m. my time and then I'm gonna go sleep probably till about eight and then we'll get up again. So let me show you my TBR. My TBR is made up of books basically from previous TBR Cluedo months that I hadn't quite got to yet. First, we have got The Deep by River Solomon. I'm really excited to get to this. This has been on my TBR for a long time now. It's about how uh, pregnant African slave women were thrown overboard by slave owners and now they're, they exist as like mermaids, I think. These water-dwelling descendants, one of the mermaids i think holds the trauma of all generations i've heard it's pretty hard hitting this is gonna be my first river solomon and i really want to read sorrowland by river solomon like i got so many books by this author that i want to read so i think i'm gonna start with this tonight then the longest novel that i have on my tbr is cracked up to be by courtney summers this was picked by one of my patrons in a grand tbr cluedo it's just over 200 pages so it's not that long and i read courtney summers really really quick i always get hooked into courtney summers i'll link i just did a vlog where Courtney Summers tried to qualify as one of my favorite authors and was not successful just <laughs> but if this gets a five star Courtney Summers will qualify so like she's getting another chance she's getting another chance this is I think her debut and it's about this perfect girl and when that cover starts fracturing I don't really know I just love Courtney Summers that's all I need to know she's incredible she's a beautiful person. Then we also have the novella Killjoy by Holly Jackson, which is a prequel to the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I have the audiobook and the ebook for this. So we're like, listen, we're set up, guys. We're pretty set up well for this readathon. That is about Pip going to a murder mystery party instead of like actually solving a serious crime. And I just love this series. I know the series is done now forever. So I'm just excited to get a little bit extra of Pip and of the characters in the series. And then that might be all we read, right? That's pretty good standing but I thought I would just throw in if we do finish all of that what I'm gonna pick up is Delicates by Brenna Thumner this is the sequel to the graphic novel Sheets so it's a graphic novel so although it's you know it's fairly long it's a graphic novel I think this would be really good for at the end of the readathon I'm gonna be doing a live till midnight tomorrow night so if you guys don't know me I go I'm asleep by 11 every night this is this is tough for me out <laughs> I'm like awake till 2 <laughs> I can't do it. You can. can't. you can! You can do it, you can! You can! So I think this will be good tomorrow night when I'm sleepy. I literally just purchased this. It arrived a couple days ago because I started this series this year and I would like to just finish it and tick it off and not, you know, finish another series. So yeah, if we can, we'll read this. Otherwise, our TBR is these two and Killjoy, which I think is a pretty good leg of TBI. If I can read four books in this 24 hour readathon, I will be really happy and the dogs will be really happy too. <laughs> so I'm gonna go hop on our live and we will start reading. We'll see how much I get read tonight. Stay 
being at home Turn off the phone I will listen to you You lay in the sheets You hold on to me Like I'm already gone And whisper your words Like secrets written In an old mole skin Morning! <laughs> I'm tired! It is 8.50, 8.49. I've been awake for about an hour. I woke up at 7.45. I woke up at quarter past six. Because usually I went to bed at half two. I was like, no. (laughs) And so we're not going to have that. Okay. (laughs) We're going to go back to sleep. So I woke up at 7.45, which was before my alarm. I set an alarm for half eight. So I've been like waking up. And then I sat down. I read, I got to page like 50-ish of the deep last night. I read another 30 pages to get me halfway. I am enjoying this. I am enjoying this. Perhaps not quite as much as I thought I would. So basically this is following the descendants of black slaves who were thrown over the ships. Yetu, the one we're following, the protagonist, is the historian for the group. And what that means is she carries all the memories of the trauma the legacy of trauma that all of them experienced. She carries it all, the rest of them don't remember it. And then every couple of years, every year, I don't know how often, she like gives it back to them for them to remember, but only very briefly. And she's convinced this time, she's very weak. She's convinced that if they give it back to her, she will die. So she flees and leaves them in this state. So yeah, that's kind of the story. We also have a chapter following, I think the perspective of the first historian. So where this kind of practice began. And it's told in like we we did this we did that which was interesting objectively my feeling with this book is that i'm like experiencing a work of art rather than a book objectively this is a work of art in what it's saying in the analogy that it's representing it's such a sad beautiful haunting book in what it's using this story of the mermaids and the historians and the legacy of trauma to represent but I don't feel like in order to give a book five stars I need to feel like absorbed into it and I don't I feel like I'm looking at this from a distance I feel like I'm at an art gallery looking at a painting and seeing what it represents and going oh that's beautiful harrowing sad whatever but it doesn't feel like an experience of reading a book to me which is like fair enough for like different books are different experiences and I'm already really glad that I'm finally getting to this so I don't know I am enjoying it um, I'm listening to audiobook so I'm gonna pop out for a quick walk I've been going out for a walk every morning for like the past week and I'm gonna listen to the audiobook while I'm on my walk I'm only gonna do like a half hour walk because time is of the essence <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do the walk and then I'll come back and put my makeup on for the day and get ready. So I reckon by then I will probably finish the deep and I can check in with you. But I definitely feel like I need to, like, I've got the window open, the breeze is amazing. I feel like I need to get out in the fresh air to fully wake up. <laughs> Okie dokie, I just finished The Deep. Where's my book? 
<laughs> I just finished the deep and I enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it a 3.5, verging closer to a four. I'm gonna round it up on Goodreads. I just wish it had been a bit longer. We had uh, Yetu's perspective and then we also had the perspective. Let me just take my, I don't wanna leave my most treasured bookmark in there, my seals. Yeah, we had Yetu's perspective and then we had like perspectives of historians from the past in like two chapters. And I just didn't feel very connected to those two chapters. I understand why they're important and I'm just gonna move you back a bit. Uh, I think they should have been there, but I think the book should have been longer if we're gonna have that. But I think it's such an important book. It's a very intelligent book. Like I said, I do feel a bit detached from it. It's like I went to a gallery and saw like the most amazing piece of art I've ever seen with so much. <laughs> I was angry. I was angry. With so much depth and meaning and importance to it, but like, that's not what I necessarily look for in a book. Do you know what I mean? But I think it's an important read and I would still recommend a lot of people read it. You know, and what it says about lived trauma and about the burden of carrying the history and, in, and carrying on the history for people who do that. And I just think there's, and the community like putting that on them. There's so many different uh, interesting aspects to this book. It's also queer, which I didn't know going into it. That's a part of it that I kind of wish, right, if that's gonna be there, we need more. I didn't really buy into it. I didn't feel like super attached to it. It was fine. I liked it, but again, I would have wanted more. So this was like 100, 150, 160 pages. I wish maybe it'd been like 250, I think, to kind of include all of the different aspects. I'm not talking a full length novel, 200 to 250, I think, even with 40 more pages, we could have got just a bit more depth that I would have wanted. But, whoa, that's violent. First <laughs> book of the 24 hour -thon finished. It is currently 11 o'clock. So I'm quickly gonna have some brunch because I typically eat lunch at 11 and the read the next reading sprint start at 12. So I'm gonna have some quick lunch and then I think I'm gonna start Killjoy. You can't really see it, but I didn't see because it automatically like, just takes you to the first chapter but there's like letters and cast of characters, which is very interesting. I think I'm gonna start this next because it'd be nice to finish another book, I think. And then we'll endeavor to read Cracked Up To Be, which I think will just be a little bit longer of a reading experience. I was gonna have for lunch, we have some turkey burgers, which are really nice with some broccoli and potatoes, but I just don't feel like eating meat. Cause sometimes I just get like that. I don't really like eating meat, especially at lunches. I'm not a big fan of meat at lunch, <laughs> but I don't really have any other food that's like easy for me to make quickly. Other than I'm gonna have a jacket potato for lunch with beans and cheese, okay? It's a very British lunch. Don't need to judge me. Whoa, it's the height of cuisine. <laughs> That's disgusting. I'm blocking you. How do I block somebody on this thing? A few moments later. Okay, my cats never bring any animals in. They don't really kill animals, but this boy, this naughty, naughty cat. Are you ignoring me because you're so naughty? Yeah. <laughs> He's really sad because we caught him in the garden with a massive mouse in his mouth. <laughs> We've made him come in and he's really pissed off about it. Now he wants me to put the tap on for him, don't you? Hey, he likes to give kisses. You want to kiss the mic? Okay, buff it. That's so nice. Whoa, you're giving them so many kisses but you're naughty. I shouldn't be kissing your head, to be honest. Gross cat. I feel like I need to wash my mouth now. All right, here you go. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on. <laughs> you're obsessed with the camera. Stop getting your mouse germs all over me. All right, taps on for you. Are we the best of friends? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. You want me to rub your butt now? Great. <laughs> so I haven't done much reading in these sprints that we're doing at the moment, cause this. You can have a drink? Drink time? Mm-mm. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, let's actually go get some reading done.
I just finished the second sprint with my patrons and I finished Killjoy. I read the whole of Killjoy in those sprints and I'm gonna give it five stars. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. Now, is it the best thing I've ever read? No, no. <laughs> it is a 130 page novella, but it's so much fun. It's so much fun. I just think it was such a five star. Three. for what it was. It's such a fun little like Easter egg of a book, right? I don't think this is where you should start with a good girl's guide to murder series. I would say read the first book at least and then read this. If you've read the series and loved it, honestly, read this book. The audiobook was on Scribd. I bought the ebook ages ago. I don't know how much it was, but I think I bought it really cheap. I would recommend getting the ebook because basically what happens is in this, Pip, before the events of Good Girl's Guide to Murder, her and her friends host this murder mystery party. Party. It's like basically a game, like they've bought the game. This makes me want to do it by the way. This makes me want to like hold a murder mystery party. Only problem is I have no friends. <laughs> Dear Lord, what a sad little life, Jane. But they have like brought this game, they all have to act as characters in the 1920s. There's like clues printed out, there's like a booklet printed out that they go through the game with. So they go through stages of the game, they get information about themselves and their character. And you see all of that written throughout. And I just thought it was such a fun thing. Like Holly Jackson just knows how to make shit Fun. The reason I love A Good Girl's Guide to Murder so much is the mixed media elements and like the fun that is throughout that book. Holly Jackson says, I'm gonna give you a concept, I'm gonna give you a moment, I'm gonna give you an experience. And that's what I appreciate, right? Too many people just write books. Give me an experience. <laughs> So yeah, that element of it just made it so much fun. It made me feel like I was playing the game. It made me feel so into it. I loved seeing Pip's origins as like her loving investigating stuff and her figuring out actually in this, at the end of this, she figures out what she wants to do her EPQ on. And the ending is just really fun to read if you read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and know, you know, what happens and everything. It's just fun seeing like the origins of that. It's very interesting. There's also, I feel like this was written after book two or around the same time because it ties into the events of book two as well. So I think this would be fun, I think, to read after you've read book one, but before you read book two. That would be how I recommend picking it up. I just loved it. I had the best time reading it. Is it a five star, you know, best book of all time? No, but did I have a great time reading it? Yeah. I'm sad this series has ended, you know? This was a fun little goodbye for me <laughs> to these characters because I don't think Holly Jackson will come back to it, nor do I think she should with the ending that we had to the series. But this was just a fun little moment to be back with some of the characters. And it's made me so excited for Holly Jackson's next book. I just, I'm so nervous because I don't know if it's going to have mixed media. It seems like a bit more of a traditional thriller storyline with like, you know, I think like five, six friends go to this deserted island, five survive or whatever. So I'm just gonna be intrigued as to how she carries that level of fun. But yeah, I loved the elements. Can I find a bit? The elements with like the clues that they'd get, this booklet that took them through the game. It was just so much fun. Okay, so there's like this one where they got shown what their alibi was. Then there were clues with like handwritten notes. It was just really, really fun. And if you've enjoyed the series, I would 100% recommend you picking it up. And I'm so glad that I have finally gone around to it. So it is now, we've just finished the live. It's 20 past three. So we've got, how many hours left this live? <laughs> How many hours left? Like nine hours, just under nine hours left of this. So it's a pretty good amount of time. I am starting to feel a bit tired and I know I'm gonna be up till midnight. I have to wake up at six tomorrow to edit the weekend's video. I need a drink. I was like, should I have a nap? But I don't think so. I think I'm gonna have another snack. <laughs> That's gonna be my way of getting through this. And I'm gonna start cracked up to be. This is, I feel like I'm in a really good position. I feel like I'm definitely gonna be able to finish this and maybe get to Delicates this evening as well. This is Courtney Summer's debut. It came out in 2008, which is kind of crazy. 2008. <laughs> I'm just so excited to read another Courtney Summers. This is gonna be my fourth read. If you watched last weekend's video, you'll know this is her next chance to be qualified as one of my favorite authors. If this gets five stars, she will get into the Hall of Fame. We're following this perfect girl, you know, the perfect girl at secondary school and things start to become not so perfect. It's only 220 pages, so I'll probably read to halfway and then check in with you. I always read Courtney Summers books really, really fast. So I'm feeling good about this. I feel like we're smashing this out. The only sad thing is, is that Goodreads like expected me to have finished another book so I didn't get any more ahead on my Goodreads goal. So we're still 16 books behind. So we're only gonna get to maybe like 14 books behind schedule. <laughs> but at least we're making progress and I feel like this is really good for me like ticking books off that I've wanted to read for ages. It's great for my mental health. <laughs> 
And it's also, this was also gifted to me by one of my patrons who is participating in the readathon, Melissa. So feel really good, picked by one of my patrons as well. I will read to chapter 11 and then I will check in with you. Oh, perfect. The one I want is right there. There she is. Cute. Rusty red on her shoulder. I was cleaning her shoe. When it clicked on the trot over in the bright morning dew. We brushed and we braided dandelions and chewed. It was a mutual arrangement we both saw into. It is six o'clock. You can't see. Anytime I show it six o'clock. I am halfway through Cracked Up To Be. It did take me a little while, like I've I've relaxed a bit. I'm <laughs> not reading quite as fast. I've actually, I've had enough and I'm about to blow. That's like 110 pages in three hours with me like not 100% reading all the time. I watched some football with my dad. I had a slice of toast. <laughs> And I'm really enjoying this, actually. I'm really, really enjoying this. So we're following Parker, who used to be perfect. She used to be the perfect girl, like on a roll, head of cheer, most popular girl, basically. And then something happens and we find out she's like basically abandoned all that and tells everyone what she thinks of them, is very blunt, is on like probation. I don't know what American words are, but like not doing her homework. She's like, might not graduate. She's in a real sticky situation. She was drinking at school a lot and stuff. And it's becoming clear something happened at this party that has kind of spurred this change on. This was written in 2008. 2008, it doesn't feel like that. Oh my God, my phone. The Discord is just too popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was written in 2008 and it doesn't feel like that. When you think of the stuff that was coming out in 2008, like the paranormal romance and like it feels so ahead of its time. It does feel like something that was perhaps released like five years ago, but not something that was released 14 years ago you know, which I think is a real testament to Courtney Summers writing. And I'm really enjoying seeing the roots of her stories and her, you know, her girls, her protagonists from this book. There's an interesting foreword in this or introduction in this from Courtney Summers when this was reissued, talking about how it was really difficult to sell this book, like to get a publisher to buy it because she writes unlikable girls. And honestly, Parker's the blueprint. <laughs> Courtney says, it's been more than 10 years and Parker Fadley is still the backbone of all my characters who have followed. Without her, there'd be no, is it Regi Regina? Regina? No Eddie, no Sloane, no Romy, and no Sadie, or the girl after that, or the girl after that. God, I, I'm thinking back to when I think, wow, this must have been so different to what was coming out at the time. Like, unlikable girls. Really girls who were like, tell people what they think, doesn't want to be liked, doesn't want anyone's validation anymore, and is like, troubled. I don't think that that was necessarily being written in 2008. And Miss Courtney Summers broke the mold. Broke the mold. <laughs> now perhaps it is more common, but I feel like Courtney Summers still does this so well of girls who are going through tra trauma and are, in some cases hardened against the world. And in some cases, you know, I just read I'm the girl and I kind of like innocent and naive against a horrible world. But she's so great at writing girls like this and girls, like young girls who you don't have to agree with every decision that they make. I hate that in YA when you're supposed to just like, they're supposed to be these pretty little flowers who always make the right decision and don't fuck up and don't, not even fuck up, but like do things that you disagree with, right? That go against your idea of morality or sanctity, I don't know. But, um, you know, Courtney Summers doesn't, doesn't allow that. She says, no, my girls are gonna do things you, you don't agree with and make you uncomfortable as a reader. And I love that. I love that. But I am getting pretty tired. <laughs> So I feel like I need to shake it up a bit from reading and I'm feeling in a good position. Our last sprint start at nine. You can't see me, why am I talking? Our last sprint starts at nine there for three hours. So obviously I wanna finish this. I do think I'm in a good position to finish Cracked Up To Be and read Delicates. This is literally what I know what I need to read when I'm gonna be falling asleep <laughs> later. So what I'm gonna do, my mum's making dinner. I'm gonna edit. 
I think until dinner and maybe a bit after, edit tomorrow's video that's going up because I'm gonna have to wake up. After being up till midnight tonight, I'm gonna wake up like six tomorrow morning to get tomorrow's video done before I have to go out at two. And I have to take the thumbnail and everything, I haven't done that. So it would make me feel pretty bit better if I edit some of the video and I just feel like I've read a lot and I've read a lot of stories, right? It's like one thing reading a 600 page book, but I've read a lot of different stories and I feel like my brain just needs a break. I also think I'm gonna go try coffee for the first time. What? I've never had coffee. I used to make it a lot. I used to work in a cafe, but I feel like my coffee making days are far. I don't remember how to make coffee. I used to know how to make every kind of coffee. I don't remember anything, <laughs> but I'm gonna try coffee first time. I need some energy. I need it. Now I'm gonna make it very milky and very sweet and we'll see how we do. <laughs> but I need a pick me up because I am falling asleep. I really am. Like I'm very tired. My head's hurting. So I'm hoping if I go have a coffee for the first time in my life, Genuinely, this is a big moment. And then I'm gonna edit for a bit and then I'll probably come back to reading this after dinner, finish it near the start of the sprints and then spend the rest of the sprints slowly making my way through this. Sounds like a pretty good, pretty good evening to me. So let's go make coffee for the first time, everyone. I'm a little bit scared, I'm not gonna lie to you, but let's do it. <laughs> The moment of truth. Right, here we are. <laughs> Coffee in my lovely fairy loot mug. I feel like this is a mistake. <laughs> I lost all hope today. I'm empty. I feel like I have not made it milky enough. Everyone's gonna be looking at me going, girl, that's milky. Okay. I put three sugars in. <laughs> oh, I'm really like a child, you know? Okay. Oh my God, how does anyone drink that? <laughs> no, it was a mistake. I feel like I have to though. If it's gonna give me energy, I need it. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna go downstairs and put two more sugars in. <laughs> I mean, it's still vile, <laughs> but I'm gonna drink it. I'm just gonna drink it. Oh my God. <laughs> Cause I need the energy and let's edit for like 45 minutes to an hour. Oh my God. How do people send money on this shit? <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I literally just finished my book. <laughs> I don't know how to react. <laughs> oh my God, I'm like a mess. Give me a moment, everyone. <laughs> finished, cracked up to be. I think I'm gonna give it five stars, which means Courtney Summers is one of my favorite authors. <laughs> She's only gone and done it. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving it five stars. <laughs> It wasn't five stars until like maybe the last 80 pages. That last sprint we just did, we just did a 45 minute sprint. I think I read like the last 80 pages and like, yeah. Yeah. 
I don't even have to talk about it. My, I'm so tired. <laughs> I think I'm gonna, um, it's like half 10, I think almost 25 past 10. I'm gonna cuddle up now in this last half, an hour and a half and I'm gonna read Delicates. I'm not gonna talk to you about it tonight. Like I'll give you my thoughts in the morning. Cracked up to be, right. <laughs> I love Parker. I fucking love Parker. I love her. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. If you watched my last vlog, you know, Courtney Summers has joined the Hall of Fame. Joined the Hall of Fame as one of my favorite authors. No matter who you are, where you come from, if you've got a dream, there's no one out there that can stop you from achieving it. <sighs> it just feels right. Also, if we're counting Killjoy, Holly Jackson has also joined the ranks. As if, as if this video has been more successful in favorite author qualifiers than the dedicated vlog I did for it. That's a bit diabolical if you ask me. So can we just like let them ascend into the top author ranks? Let's just take a moment. So I gave the synopsis, Parker has been through something obvious, obviously awful. The way that what has happened to her is revealed and just the understanding for the depth of her feeling that you get is amazing. I don't even know how to speak about this book without really spoiling the journey that you go on. That's the whole point, the journey that you go on with her feelings and understanding why she's feeling the way she's feeling and feeling that with her and being in that emotion with her. I think this is one of the best depictions I've seen of someone going through what Parker's going through. I don't wanna like explicitly say stuff because I can't remember what's a spoiler. It's late, I've got no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that I love so much about Courtney Summers is she is not afraid to go there. She gets into the ugly, she gets into the gritty, she gets into the places that no one wants to go. She like addresses topics in a way that's like a little bit taboo, it's a little bit like people are afraid to show that side of stuff. But she does it and she does it so well. I <laughs> just And also the fact that this is from 2008 and it's her debut book, yeah. That's a contributing factor because I just can't believe that this is a book that she wrote when she was like 22, I think she said, in 2008 and still feels fresh and like, you know, like a new perspective on stuff and like saying stuff that people don't want to say and portraying stuff in a way people don't want to portray stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Courtney Summers, one of my favorite authors ever. We can officially say it. I can't believe this vlog is more successful at me qualifying favorite authors in the whole vlog I did for it. That's a negative slay. <laughs> it is half 10. We have got 37 minutes left on these sprints. I'm gonna get into bed now. I've been sprinting at the desk this evening because I knew I'd get sleepy, but I'm gonna get into bed and I'm gonna read Delicates, the graphic novel, which is the sequel to Sheets. But I reckon I should be able to get this read in the next hour and a half. I'm sleepy, my brain needs pictures. <laughs> I will probably check in with you in the morning. I'm not gonna lie because I wanna speak about a book. A book a <laughs> I want to speak about books eloquently because that's what I'm known for. <laughs> when I get tired, I get even more thinking I'm funny when I'm not. Anyways, let's go read a graphic novel. I'm so excited. Mm.
Good morning. Have we all recovered? <laughs> so I finished Delicates last night and I'm giving it five stars. I cannot believe my luck. Honestly, I can't believe it. That's three five stars on the readathon. Excuse me? <laughs> I loved this. So this is the sequel to Sheets, the graphic novel, where our main character, I can't even remember her name, Marjorie. She runs her family's laundromat and she meets a ghost called Wendell. And it's them becoming friends. And they're still in this, but we also meet Eliza, who is on the cover, who is kind of socially awkward, struggles to make friends. She gets bullied by the people that Marjorie, Marjorie's kind of like, you know, an outcast too, but she's kind of fallen into this friendship with some people and they're bullied. Eliza really badly and this is a middle grade right this is a middle grade graphic novel series the way that this covers some tough issues like unaliving ideations I'm trying to be much more careful with what words I say so YouTube doesn't get mad at me but issues such as that it it tackles with this. I think that's so important for children and it has so many important lessons. I almost cried in it. I just really loved the journey that all the characters went on. Wendell, the ghost in this, is much more of like comedic relief and I really liked him as that. I just loved it and I really enjoy the illustration style. It's very different to like other illustration styles that I've seen before. You know, it's about loneliness and sadness and compassion for other people and you know caring for others other than yourself and looking out for others and friendship and sadness and hope and empathy it's about all these things i don't know i just love this and i think so many kids in middle grade it's like in this one they're the eldest year of middle grade middle school sorry sorry i'm not american <laughs> I just think this would be so helpful to so many people. It was the perfect book to read last night and it's another series finished for me, but I don't know if there's gonna be any more in the series. So for now I'm calling this a series finished because this came out I think in 2021. Grief is also tackled in this because Marjorie's mother has died. There's just so many like deep feelings that I think sometimes we can stray away from in kids media and this tackles it in such a subtle, caring way so i loved it so i am so happy with the four books i finished i am so proud of her i could cry these three plus killjoy as well i feel like i did such a good job if i do say so myself no it's made me really excited to make more content i'm just feeling really good about everything at the moment and i had three five stars these plus killjoy which is absolutely amazing i read about 800 pages like that is just unknown for the 24 hour readathon i usually struggle with them but doing it with my patreon trends and just the live shows and just like the group vibe wow. I just loved it so so much so yeah I hope you enjoyed this vlog as well I really enjoyed making this vlog let me know down below what you thought of any of the books I read in this readathon and if you got to the end comment the camera emoji because Eliza is big on photographing ghosts she believes that she can photograph ghosts um so yeah comment the camera emoji if you got to the end thank you guys so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you soon in another video Bye.